Lord. Our next witness is Daniel Bongino. Uh, Daniel Bongino has served with both the New York Police Department and the United States Secret Service. He's also a best-selling author and host of the Dan Bongino Show podcast. Mr. Bongino has an MBA from Penn State University and both an MA and BA from the City University of New York. Mr. Bongino, you may begin. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Jordan, I deeply appreciate the opportunity to speak on this critical issue. Ms. Underwood Brooks, Mr. Floyd, deeply sorry for your loss. I can only hope you take some solace in the justice that we all pray is to come. I mean that. That was a tough video to watch for all of us. Police Officer Dan O'Sullivan, he was a friend of mine. We went through the police academy together. Sadly, we lost touch when we graduated. So we were both assigned to separate precincts, different areas of the city of New York. Dan and I were briefly reunited in 1998, but it was no joyous occasion. I was reunited with Dan in a hospital in Queens, where he was hospitalized with devastating injuries after pulling over off duty to assist a driver in a critical emergency situation. He was hurt badly. Dan was the very essence of a public servant. Dan always put himself last while putting his commitment to the safety and security of the public he pledged to serve always first. That was the Dan I knew. During my employment with both the NYPD and the United States Secret Service, I had the honor and profound privilege of working with agents and police officers who had committed themselves to a higher cause. Just like Dan, I met so many of these committed public servants that sadly, I can't even recall all their names anymore. These are good men and women. Yes, as with any profession, there are officers, no question, who aren't suited for the job. Some will cause trouble, sometimes worse. We've seen that. But in my experience, this is rare and becoming rare. The special agents I work with and remain friends with to this day in the Secret Service join members of the NYPD and New York City Fire Department on that tragic day of September 11, 2001. You know what they did? They sprinted into those burning buildings and personally escorted people out. As we all know, those buildings collapsed, taking many of those brave NYPD and FDNY souls with them. Those brave souls were running into the buildings. Everyone else was evacuating. These are the types of people I was honored and deeply privileged to work with. Public safety came first. Everything, everything else came second. Sometimes even their own families. The defund the police movement will target these heroes. They are the police, these people. It's not some amorphous mass that will be affected. It's real heroes in real time, right now. Removing these heroes from your communities and my community will do nothing but ensure chaos and destruction. Police officers are the front lines, putting themselves between the evildoers among us and the honest, hardworking Americans just yearning for some security and prosperity in a small slice of Americana. We can and should commit to police accountability. There's no question about that. But we can do it without shredding the thin wall between civilization and chaos. There are few jobs in the country as stressful as policing. I receive an email or a text a few times a year notifying me about the death or injury of a police officer I knew, worked with, or knew someone I worked with. Imagine if that was happening at your job. Think about that just for a minute. God forbid you found out a coworker of yours was killed or injured in the line of duty in the course of doing their job. You didn't just get the text, you got this text a couple times a year. That's policing. That's what they do. They risk their own lives for yours. I'll say in closing, I spoke at an event for police officers years ago and a spouse of one of these heroes said this, she said, the most wonderful sound in the world for the spouse of a police officer is the sound of Velcro at night. Maybe saying, why Velcro? Because it's how a police officer's body armor is secured to their bodies. And when that body armor comes off and that sound echoes in their ears, the families of these heroes know that they're finally home safely. I ask you, please, with the greatest of respect and humility, Please stop this defund the police abomination before someone gets hurt. Thank you for your time.